नमस्ते स्वागत है आपका इंडिया दिस वीक के नए एपिसोड में और मैं हूं आपकी होस्ट आमना अंसारी खालिद बेग के साथ हाय दिस इज खालिद बेग एंड वेलकम टू येट अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ इंडिया दिस वीक आई डू नॉट नीड टू इंट्रोड्यूस आवर पैनलिस्ट इज द सेकंड मोस्ट एलिजिबल बैचलर इन इंडिया आफ्टर सलमान खान ए आई एम dhinadhinda welcome back yeah we missed you we need to have you at least once for a month so it's been quite a long time how have you been thank you khalid thank you amna and just so that everybody knows don't set all the girls on me i am gay so only eligible boys need apply right mere right. ko mere ko dulha chahiye dulhan nahi chahiye ha right so guys i mean you know i mean that's like what well, am has made it very clear yes so today uh, we're doing an interesting topic and no one better than am being there because he's so objective when it comes to the prime minister of india and people really <laughs> love his analysis on shri narendra modi ji so uh, it's been 8 years it's been in the news people have been talking about the achievements and the failures so we thought we'll also do our own segment uh, it's been 8 years and also he's created a record of sorts because this is the longest time we've had a non congress uh, you know prime minister in power in the history of independent or partitioned india so that is a huge fact and that's a huge reality that uh, we live in now so what we've decided is that we'd be going in with eight uh, uh, achievements of narendra modi and we'll be going in with eight major failures of narendra modi with what we've compiled in our research so we'll start off with the achievements and the first achievement and i'd like to get aim's view on it so i am a uh, few years back if somebody would have told me that upi united payments interface would be such a reality that from the cobbler to the you know vegetable vendor to the billionaire to the millionaire to middle class folks everybody would be using it you could pass to 500 kilometers of indian highways just with your phone in your hand i wouldn't have believed it uh, this is something he pushed the prime minister pushed in 2016 when he went for the upi uh, also we can be proud of the fact that it's developed by national payments corporation of india so something which is made in india and the figures are massive i am 304 banks it's available on monthly volume of 4.5 billion transactions and a value of 8.26 lakh crores upi transactions have grown from 23% in 18 to 55% in 2021 and uh, atm lines are things of the past at 4.8 billion india accounted for the largest number of real estate tra- uh, real sorry real time transactions in the world uh, am how do you look at this achievement your views on So you know I'm not even going to go to the numbers. Right. For me the thing is I can today have pani puri for 20 25 rupees on the street side and pay my pani puri wala on phone pay or google pay or something like that. Right. Okay. <clears throat> There is not a single person today who uh does not accept digital payment unless you're going into deep rural India. I mean, right. even secondary cities, uh, auto wallas and things like that are taking Google Pay, Phone Pay, whatever you want, UPI, right. Right. right? Now, with the benefit of hindsight, we should have seen it, but it also highlights one policy failure, which was demonetization. Uh, right. Did we need demonetization with hindsight given, or was demonetization a critical pusher of the fact that we've gone in for digital payments today? right now there is an argument i disagree i think we needed demonetization to give us that initial push to digital currency this is my personal belief demonetization plus covid uh, right. because you know in covid it became it took on a life of its own because you don't want to exchange notes cards you know that personal hygiene angle to it so that would have also pushed it but i believe we needed demonetization right uh because one of the things even when a lot of people were criticizing demonetization what we were seeing was the mobile phone revolution that we saw uh-huh. it made even the illiterate digitally literate they would not know how to read or write but they knew how digits work they were digitally literate right and they could press certain buttons identify certain things on phones uh-huh and do certain things on phones which theoretically speaking we should have been able to link to the success of upi right but ultimately how a policy is counted as a success is by the results and i think the results today are particularly spectacular right. you know for you go to europe you go to america you go to japan you don't come across this level of digital payments that you do in india 
there is not a single indian who hasn't who does not know digital pay and even if he doesn't have a bank account he's got a wallet of some kind uh, lying around which i mean it has to be linked to a bank account but uh, they would have had a bank account which they would have never used which they right. would have only gone to deposit their salary check gotten the cash out through a teller mm-hmm. today you don't even have to do that right right and it's brought so much efficiency of scale and speed of payment etc 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 i don't think people even realize the kind of knockdown effects it has in obsol- in obsoleting a lot of bank tellers in obsoleting atms and moving direct to direct payment without having a banking interface in that sense absolutely right so we've gone on the achievement front and i would like to continue now on the failure front so abhijit as we saw with the brutal anti ca riots that culminated into uh, delhi riots and we lost 50 indian citizens across communities uh, the anarchy before that the thousands of crores of public property damaged a uh, similarly we saw it in the anti farm bill protests we were held hostage our public highways were occupied for months they were not cleared uh also may i co- go back to anti ca with you know mini shahin bags these so called liberated zones springing up in different cities we saw in action there aim we saw in action in the case of the anti farm bill protest losses were calculated up to 70000 crores by some of chamber of commerce industry groups then abhijit we also saw the same thing repeat during the blasphemy protest where again mobs were you know free to riot and you could say on a smaller scale and now we're seeing it again in agnipat where they are you know agnipat protests where they are burning trains as if it's you know they are uh, they own property and they're like burning them in dozens and that's again thousands of crores of you know state uh, taxpayers money so i am what do you make of this this internal security which home minister would have got away with such an abysmal record and we piling up losses in billions what is your view point on this on these so four apparently appa- apparently the problem is in the home minister the problem is the prime minister apparently the home minister wants to act the prime minister doesn't let him act all right uh, and that is where i have a problem with this because you see it's okay to make a mistake once but if you keep making the same mistake over and over and over again mm-hmm. there's something fundamentally flawed with your thinking process and mind you this is the first time even in godhra the accusation is that it was a crime of commission when in fact it was a crime of omission here mm-hmm. omission is not criminalized in this country it's that you sat and did nothing right okay now i was hoping that that would change once he became prime minister because if you remember gujarat at that point had asked maharashtra and rajasthan for uh, central troops crpf and things like that because they suspected riots were going to happen and it right. was those states that refused to send those uh, uh, troopers right now what happens here is very different here you have the prime minister in charge with everything in his uh, uh, this thing but the riots are happening in delhi right. they start off trans yamuna they then migrate to jamia millia islamia across the yamuna okla jamia millia islamia and then they migrate to all these little colonies and things like that and mind you shahin bag came about only after the these chaps got violent in jamia millia they wanted to protect themselves and they sat down as a kind of a Uh, like a shoal of fish sees protection in numbers they sat down pretending to be peaceful and then they realized this was an effective protest and that is when it grew it right. grew to protect rioters in the first place shahin bag was initially conceived to protect rioters hmm. okay it inconvenienced do you remember the traffic jams that i mean neither of you live in delhi so you would know but the kind of traffic jams you were seeing on the ring roads at that point of time was phenomenal they did nothing to get rid of it ultimately it metastasized into the uh 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 delhi riots the farm again they did not control it right in the beginning and mind you you know the sora riots that happened when uh, one month into the abrogation of article 370 when they started lifting uh uh uh, uh the curbs mm-hmm. what happened they didn't have the intelligence on the ground to see people see if you allow people to gather the game is lost right you have to go in right at the beginning and prevent the gathering from happening all right they still do not seem to have learned that right and this is a function fundamentally of police reforms 
Okay. okay. It's 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 it. it, it, it it's not just internal security it's fundamental police reforms which are simply not happening in this country right. and this is where the genesis of everything is happening the nupur sharma riots the uh, 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 right now the uh, what you call it the agni riots uh, 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 the uh, literally every single riot that you've seen is fundamentally a failure of policing and uh, you know i mean internal security is slightly different uh they're not very good at internal security either but maybe we can discuss that separately this is a failure of police it's right. an intelligence failure where you're not able to gather intelligence in time and to preempt it in time and the problem is you get away with it because the opposition is so bad that you keep voting again and again for the same incompetent government even though you're probably going to be the next target but what would uh, uh, bijit according to you these page four major uh, rioting episodes uh, the anti ca which culminated into the delhi riots and the farm bill protests which again there was rioting and then there was some killing also at the singo border then the you know blasphemy protests and now the agni what takes according to you why, why does the pmb uh, you know take a policy of inaction because he thinks he's going to lose votes he thinks he lose more votes taking action because i think he's bogged down by the memory of what ha- happened when the congress government took action against the india against corruption you remember when baba ramdev put on a woman's clothes and ran away from the right, this right. thing but yeah. it wasn't ramdev who was ridiculed it was the fury against the government that ultimately uh, grew but right. see that was in the context of corruption yeah. okay it's the same thing that they've drawn from major economic reforms they believe it was the economic of reforms of vajpayee that destroyed him mm-hmm. uh in the 2004 general election whereas if you read vivek dahijia and rupa subramania's book they very conclusively demonstrated that he did not it was in fact the uh, uh, uh the differences that emerged between vajpayee and the sasanchalak of the rss why the rss had refused to come out and campaign for the bjp at that point of time that the bjp lost those elections all right and see that's a mistake now the rss does not want to do so even if they are not entirely happy with what modi does they are not going to do to him what they did to vajpayee because they realize the consequences of it right that brings me to uh, sorry i'm mm-hmm. i just want to finish this one uh, abhijit that brings me to an interesting paradox that uh, we're talking about like the failure of let's say of course law and order internal security is a different thing and external security is a different thing now the fact is uh, i mean of course we've all grown up in that era of 2004 to 2014 you we saw terror attacks happening in tier one cities and tier two cities of india at a very alarming pace right whether that used to happen in delhi multiple uh, mumbai pune bangalore hyderabad jaipur uttar pradesh right now post 2014 once pm modi has got sworn in you've not had anything of that sort in eight years of course i want to come with the caveat we're talking about the non conflict zones of india but that too is a big deal i mean you're talking about the top 10 cities of india and then the tier to another top 10 you've not seen any terror attack and one prays and hopes that remains for the next 1000 years mm-hmm. how has that been maintained so well how have they been able to ensure because huge credit to the security apparatus there that not a single in eight years whereas it used to happen every 3 4 months and we have got used to it that is preempted this is not this it's, it's a very unique paradox it, it, it is a very unique paradox and it has a whole <coughs> set of interconnected reasons for it remember a lot of it uh, we did have some big terror attacks remember it was the uh, uh, pathan court uh, attack that led to the surgical strikes and then the pulwama attacks that led to the uh, balakot right. but that's why i said non conflict i mean of course punjab wouldn't necessarily right. qualify but kashmir is but i'm talking about the top cities that is a major major thing which this government has ensured right right uh, so there's several reasons to it the first is uh, you see a reorientation within pakistan towards khalistan uh, you're going to see a lot more terror attacks now starting up in khalistan because that entire thing has now been set in motion i think we're at the nascent stage you two are very young you don't remember what it was like in the early 80s i do i grew up in delhi in the 80s where you never know when a terrorist was going to strike just 15 20 kilometers outside delhi uh you are essentially punjab is going back there and you're seeing a reorientation the second which this government has to be given credit for is actual deterrence pakistan now knows 
that if there is a big enough terrorist strike in India, India will take direct military action. It will not be in Kashmir, it will be in Pakistan proper, and it will be devastating. Okay, so they have, in a sense, created deterrence. The third is how much, of course, Pakistan's propensity to create that mischief is also reduced. They have been busy with Afghanistan trying to control that part. They have mm-hmm. also been restricted by their own internal problems of late and internal army uh, politicking and things like that. But I think you should give the government credit for at least 40 to 50 percent credit uh, in terms of establishing kind of conventional deterrence for these attacks to not happen. Right. All right, Amna, you can go in with your next one. Um, Abhijit, what I am going to talk about is the very crucial subject. It is 370 abrogation. And even there are data to show that, uh, um, uh, according to polls, that 20% of Indians think that it is the biggest achievement of this government to abrogate the 370. And also, uh, given the conflict area Kashmir has been, and given uh, entire history, this is achievement of your own. किसी भी बिना ब्लड के बिना बुलेट के उन्होंने 370 हटा दिया एंड एक तो सॉफ्ट सेपरेटिज्म था उस पे बहुत ही अच्छा उनका अटैक हुआ एंड hmm. अगर हम एक सिविलियन पर्सपेक्टिव से भी देखते हैं तो जहां पर एक स्टोन पिल्टिंग हुआ करती थी लाइक like 2010 एंड 16 का डेटा है कि 100 प्लस से ज्यादा लोगों की सिविलियंस की स्टोन उनके बच्चे जो हैं बचेंगे यानी जो जो कहते हैं ना चिंडल चिंडल चिल्ड्रन ऑफ लेसर लेसर गॉड उनके लिए ये बहुत ही बड़ा सुकून की बात है एंड वी जस्ट द वी हु लिव्स अमंग इन द नॉन कॉन्फ्लिक्ट जोन एज इन द रेस्ट ऑफ इंडिया वी नो हाउ इंपॉर्टेंट दिस सेफ्टी सिक्योरिटी एंड पीस इज तो ये क्या आपको नहीं लगता कि 370 इज अ वेरी वेरी समथिंग जहां पे गवर्नमेंट को बहुत बड़ा क्रेडिट जाना चाहिए हाउ वुड यू Huge credit uh, for them to have the vision to do it, for the guts to do it, uh, that they carried it out almost bloodlessly. Phenomenal. Okay. Uh, the fact that a lot of the uh, uh, stone pelting and thing has been vastly reduced, again, phenomenal. The issue is is it temporary or is it a permanent solution? Because, see, you can be very focused and sit on a problem and crush it while you are in charge. But then when the next person comes, is it going to remain like that? Unfortunately, what we're not seeing is the follow-on measures. Because what is if you remember, the biggest instigators and therefore beneficiaries of the terrorism ke, वो महबूबा मुफ्ती और नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस थे अब्दुल्लाह ओके वो सबसे ज्यादा इसके बेनिफिशियरी थे इसमें जो पूरा कॉन्फ्लिक्ट इकॉनमी हुआ था दैट वाज द बिगेस्ट बेनिफिशियरीज ऑफ इट द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट इकॉनमी हैज नॉट बीन डिस्ट्रॉयड राइट सो वी हैव गॉन नाउ फ्रॉम दिस सो नाउ वी गोइंग टू अनदर वन अनदर फेलियर इज द एब्सोल्यूट फेलियर एंड यू हैव स्पोकन अबाउट इट ऑन मल्टीपल प्लेटफॉर्म्स इज द फैक्ट दैट द पोस्ट पोल वायलेंस इन वेस्ट बंगाल राइट Uh, which BJP has not been able to check. I mean, hundreds of its cadres killed in cold blood, and now it's become symbolic in a very ugly, dark way with those cadres hanging from, you know, trees. And we also saw many exodus of some of their workers who had to go back, who had to go to Assam, and then Himant Abdul Sarma took them in. Uh, what could have BJP done? Because there's an argument that president's rule would have not happened. They couldn't. They were not in a position to do it. And is it much more complex, or do they deserve all the? A harsh critique on the way they've handled the post poll violence in West Bengal, <coughs> just as a matter of law and subject, law is, and order, and then also looking at the BJP. Look at, let's look at why President's rule was uh, unfeasible. It was unfeasible purely from a PR management point of view of the Prime Minister. Because the Prime Minister is accused of being a fascist, therefore he could not do it. Was it legally feasible? Yes. Okay. Is there anything in the Bombay versus uh, Union of India judgment which says that a newly formed government cannot be dismissed? No. It just lays down the four criteria for dismissal. You could have invoked the criteria. So remember, 
the greatest takeaway of West Bengal is that Modi's ego is India's biggest strategic liability at the moment. That everything is sacrificed, even the life of the BJP worker is disposable when it comes to Modi's PR. Nothing should aid or abet the narrative that Modi is a fascist. And if for that a few hundred BJP workers have to be killed, so be it. All right. Okay. Technically, under the SR Bumai judgment, it would have been perfectly legal if you had built a case, got enough video evidence to show that the police were colluding, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which you could have done through intercepts. You could have made a case. You did not. Okay. So this, again, this is, uh, 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 I think it exposes one of the darkest sides of the government that a lot that this government does is entirely, it is no longer a BJP, which is a party of the workers and the people that it represents. It's now become a one-man show party. And what is good for him becomes good for the BJP, becomes good for the nation, which is never a healthy thing. Some very strong words there. Amina, so, uh, I want to go to yeah. the achievement front now. Yeah. yeah. So basically, uh, we are discussing and seeing a lot of discussion on civilizational churning. So when we talk about civilizational churning, we talk about the issue. So BJP has solved one issue, which is the issue of Ram Mandir. And I think, what uh, I saw from the data, is that 16% of Indian things that this is the biggest achievement of this government. Also, also this is not, uh, this is the biggest achievement of this government. Uh, from the civilizational perspective, this is solution also, but also it is a solution of certain kind of conflict. Where both communities have heard the issues of both communities and have given them justice. It was not that the Muslim community said that you will get nothing out of it. They were also given even money and land also. Hmm. So, it na so kuch jo hua, or ye ek aisa mudda tha dashko se, as a uh, Indian citizen, mai ye bolungi, ki in my family, uh, people used to say ki ye khatam ho kam se kam. Because hmm. every year it used to come and police har jaghaan lagti thi. My mom used to tell me, don't go out. We never know what will happen. Bilkul, yeah. Bilkul. So, as a normal, as an ordinary citizen, you also feel ki haan chalo, ek mudda khatam hua, bhaat bada conflict ka. So, how do you see it? And you say, it as achievement or not? <laughs> Again, like with everything with this government, every achievement comes with the dark side. Right? The actions are good, the follow through name. Uh, it's not like a Javed Miyadad who used to score like five sixes in an over. It's more like, like I said, one six per over, which then averages out to one per ball, which is not a very good total. Isme kya hai? See, there's a very simple thing. Uh, Ayodhya hai, Kashi hai, Mathura hai. And as I understand it, there is two, three other smaller temples where this issue is persisting. What you need is a national framework to solve this. You keep harping on the 1990 Places of Worship Act. You have the parliamentary majority to make a new act. Okay. Uh, what would that new act be? I would propose three criteria for it. First is what is the architectural countenance of it? Is it worth preserving as architecture? Is it a modern uh, 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 something that's been built in the last 30, 40 years? Or is it is the destroyed, uh, is the new mosque on top of something of our great architectural value? Uh, number one, in which case it needs to be preserved. The second principle here is that for a, uh, at least in the uh, Salafi interpretation of things right now, uh, uh, which may not apply to India, but definitely the Saudi interpretation, uh, uh, they, they hate it if you call them Bahadis. So let's just call them what they call themselves, which is Salafi. The Salafi interpretation of things, which is the mosque is, the building is irrelevant, which is why they have destroyed Muhammad's house when he was a, uh, the house that Muhammad grew up in, they destroyed it because they didn't want it to become a place of veneration. Any of the shrines in the uh, 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 Jannat al-Baqi, they destroyed it because they didn't want it to become veneration. It's only the name, a memorial, but uh, it is not meant to be a thing of veneration. A mosque is not something sacred. It is purely a place of congregation. It is like a conference hall or a this thing. But its value comes in its archaeological terms. 
because it may not be important as anything other than a place of congregation, but it has historical value to the Indian people as being from their historical past. That is why criteria number one. Now, when you combine criteria number one and two, you come to criteria number three, which is the development of a shifting. So, for example, the way the temple of when the Suez Canal was built, sorry, not Suez Canal, the uh, Aswan High Dam was built in Egypt. The temple of Abu Simbel, uh, they were sliced up and lifted to 300 feet higher so that they were not lost to history. Okay, so come with a relocation plan for these buildings based on criteria number four, which is current sanctity. Now, what is current sanctity? Current sanctity is Hindu ke liye, the murti and the place are endowed with power. Which is why the uh, sort of what would apply to a mosque would not apply to the Kaaba or to the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem. Because the place there itself is of significance. Okay. But here it is not. So current sanctity kya hai ki Hindus still have a memory of something being there and currently worship and believe and revere something that is there on which the mosque stands. Which can only be attributed to Kashi and Mathura plus two, three other small temples traditionally. You can't apply this to things like the Kutub Binar, because 24 Jain temples are gone. Okay, they are gone, I agree. They are But do people who worship there now, do they have an, even have a memory of those temples? Zero. Okay, uh, Taj Mahal, is Taj Mahal. I don't believe in this bullshit that it was Tejo Mahal. But assume there was a Tejo Mahal under it. If anybody uh, said, Isko tod ke Tejo Mahal banao, main bon bar machine gun laga, koi bhi isko tode aega, machine gun se ho na. Why? Because there is no, you are inventing, you are picking fights unnecessarily. You have forgotten it. Somebody said it was a Shiv Mandir, so suddenly you want to go to Puja. No. If there is a continuous tradition of something being under there, which you are, which is the object of current worship, then yes. Otherwise, no. You could have codified this law and made that the basis of a new places of worship act. You're not doing it. So essentially, what they're doing is they want to keep fomenting this problem. And why do it sequentially? Because you want to keep this tension simmering. Mm. Okay, that is my problem with all of this. It is not that the BJP does not want to solve this problem, but it does not want to solve the problem for free. Yeah, the problem solve karna hai. But इसमें मेरे को क्या बक्शीश मिलेगा वो देखना पड़ेगा। तो political party को अपना करियर तो देखना पड़ेगा ना। Future भी देखना पड़ेगा। बिल्कुल, बिल्कुल। But see, I wish that बक्शीश came in terms of economic development and not identity politics। I think आप एक और failure की बात कर लीजिए फिर मैं की बात कर लेता हूँ। Right। So जो मेरे मतलब failures के तो बहुत लंबे list उसके भी हैं। We can discuss that। But for me personally, the biggest failure Failure bolu ya my waiting bolu is that ki abhi tak UCC table pe nahi hai. Hmm. Right. Also, ek chiz is me add karna chaungi. So, so, I ye, agree. I mean, unke manifesto me hi tha, jo worship places hai Hindu ke, abhi tak uska jo autonomy hai, uspe bhi baat nahi ho paayi hai. So, I think kyunki ye unke ye manifesto me bhot hi uh, importantly highlight kiya gaya hai, to uh, I think it is the failure. What do you think, Abhijit? So, both UCC and the population control bill. I think the population control bill needed to be thought out much more carefully, but definitely the PCC, uh, PCB and the UCC were definitely things that should have been brought that have not been brought. Uh, I don't know why they've not been brought, but they probably should be brought. Look, there's a lot of Hindu arguments that say that this will uh, be anti-Hindu. I agree. I accept that at some level it will be, but it's good for the country. Okay, You need a uniform civil code. You need a, uh, 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 I, I, I fully accept that the heterogeneity of Hinduism protected Hinduism. 
Okay, but in this day and age, protection of Hinduism can't come at the cost of the destruction of India. Okay, so you need that UCC. You need it now. You similarly need the population control bill and make it a draconian bill. But don't make, repeat the same mistakes that China made. That is the problem. Okay, so one child policy will give you an inverse pyramid. So have the two child policy. Have a two child policy, but then pursue it. Link all your social schemes, MN Rega, everything to it. Link having a bank account, a bank interest, everything to it. Everything where there is a penalty to be levied, levy the penalties on it. Okay, but do it. But see, we can't call something a failure. Just not doing something is not a failure. So this is why I won't, I, I would say this, a missed opportunity is not a failure. Unless you do it, you can't say it's a success or a failure. So that is why I am hesitant to count, I'd say disappointment, but I won't say success or failure. Right. Right. So Abhijit, now we come to, after a missed opportunity, another achievement. Uh, when we look at the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan and Yojana, right, and especially during the times of the pandemic, where the naysayers from the West thought that, you know, Indians will go hungry and there'll be a large, major famine and, you know, all that. 80 crore people were taken care of through the free rations, which also later, there was a, a report by the World Bank in which you had, you know, some prominent economists and some of them even have worked for former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, in which there was a huge historical line saying that India has managed to end almost end extreme poverty, right? Which is like yes. people earning less than $2 a day. How do you look at this major development under this regime? So see, for me, this has been one of the great achievements of the regime. Uh, and we should call it a regime. Remember, it's, it's, it's not a regime. It's a government. <laughs> a, government. Uh, a regime is fundamentally illegitimate and it's, uh, 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 let's call it the Modi administration. Yeah, like yeah. For American, though the leftists uh, will love it uh, if I call it regime because finally I'm addressing the fascist as the regime. True, but none of us here are leftists, so we should <laughs> use leftist right. uh, uh, jargon. Right. But look, uh, if you remember the uh, initial disaster of not being able to repatriate all those uh, migrant laborers right. and the right. kind of super spreader effect it had and the misery it had, Sure, we acknowledge that. But can we also then acknowledge that in spite of not having a job, everybody was able to get food and basic essentials? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, next to nobody died of starvation. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Sure, they were destitute. Uh, they didn't have a source of income, etc., 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 but they did not die. Right. Okay, now remember, you can't look after the psychological well-being and security aspects of things, but you did your basic, which was the right to life. You ensured the right to life. Right. And to do that for a population the size of India, remember, it wasn't just the migrant labor and the poor people who had shut down. All businesses were shut. Absolutely. You had to ensure that the entire population of 1.3 billion was fed with sufficient stores, grain, supplies. Fine, you can't get San Marzano tomatoes from Italy or, uh, you know, uh, 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 two-year-old cured uh, 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 Iberian pig hams from Spain right. or caviar from the uh, Caspian Sea. But... You got your alu, sabzi, dal, chawal, roti, uh, 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 bhindi, bengan, whatever. Right. And that was something very, very important. Right. It was a logistical feat. And mind you, 1.3 billion people, that is no joke. Having your agriculture proceed during that period without super spreader effects and having your distribution mechanism in place without magnifying the super spreader effect and more or less efficiently. I wouldn't say it was easy, but it was relatively okay for it to reach the population was spectacular. All right. Um, a question that was policy pe lekar ke hai. Basically, it's not a specific policy, pe nahin, but the way this government uh, communicate about the policies to the masses, the awareness that is failing, I think it's a problem. एक उसमें मैं क्लब करूंगी क्वेश्चन 
ऑल्सो जैसे फार्मर प्रोटेस्ट है या शाहीन बाग है तो ये कम्युनिटी स्पेसिफिक लेकर के हो जाता है कि दिस गवर्नमेंट इज एंटी सर्टन कम्युनिटी तो एंड वी कैन नॉट आर्ग्यू दैट कि ये कम्युनिटी में ही प्रॉब्लम है दैट्स नॉट हाउ डेमोक्रेसी वर्क एंड व्हेन वंस यू आर इलेक्टेड गवर्नमेंट दिस इज योर रिस्पांसिबिलिटी टू कम्युनिकेट थ्रू आउट द मासेस ये आप नहीं कह सकते हो एंड यू हैव टू मेक डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन खालिस्तानी एंड नॉर्मल सिख पीपल लाइक दैट तो वहां पे कहीं ना कहीं लगता है कि हम गवर्नमेंट फेल हो रही है बार बार एंड देन वो अपने पॉलिसी में ही चेंजेस लाना पड़ता है उनको तो उससे ऐसा भी लगता है कि शायद उन्होंने थ्रू आउट डिस्कशन ही नहीं की होगी इस पॉलिसी पे सो हाउ डू यू सी इट जी सी देर इज समिंग टू बी सेट जोरिटी कुड बी सो मच बेटर इट इज नॉट and there is there in lies the fundamental distrust of the man on top even of his own cabinet colleagues and an over reliance on bureaucrats because they are not a political threat to him okay the second issue is that this love of third rates which is what babus are single exam pass wonders uh this love <laughs> of third rates just because they cannot be a political threat to you is affecting communications ab mere ko pata nahi pmo me kis chappan ye ko baitha ke rakha hai unhe comms in charge me but clearly the bugger doesn't know how to do his or her job okay uh, i think there are no two opinions about this the prime minister's ability to communicate to an audience or amit shah's ability to communicate to the audience is not the same as strategic communications institutionalized strategic communications that the pmo does with the rest of the country which is pathetic okay jab ye hua agnivir uh, ke announcement pe jab radhanath ji ne bola dekhiye abhi चार पांच दिन में बहुत सारे अनाउंसमेंट्स होने वाले हैं तभी मेरे को एक शक हुआ कि बॉस ये ब्लो अप होने वाला है आपने क्यों सब अनाउंसमेंट एक साथ नहीं किया क्यों चार पांच दिन एक के बाद एक के एक बाद एक आ, करके वाई आर यू वेटिंग फॉर ऑल द क्लैरिफिकेशन सो दिस वॉज द सेम वेन द लॉकडाउन वॉज अनाउंस जैसे ही लॉकडाउन अनाउंस हुआ जब मैं गया बाहर सब धक्का मारी मुक्का मारी हो रहा था मेरे कॉलोनी में सब मैगी खरीदो ये खरीदो वो खरीदो लूटिंग इन माय कॉलोनी विच इज नेवर सीन लूटिंग बिकॉज पीपल वांटेड टू टेक थिंग्स अवे बिकॉज देर शिट्स केयर व्हाई सी पार्ट ऑफ अ स्ट्रेटेजिक अनाउंसमेंट हैज टू बी टू अलिविएट कंसर्न एंड वरी No announcement is going to make one hundred percent of the people happy. Usually, announcements will make fifty percent people happy. Fifty percent. The average, the assumption is fifty percent happy, fifty percent sad. Right. So, electoral gain is that one percent swing that is makes it fifty one percent, forty nine percent. Right. Okay? But for that remaining forty nine percent, you have to unko ashwasan dena padta hai ki boss, you are not being destroyed because of this. There are routes, pathways, this. how are you not able to understand this i mean you've been in power for 8 years if you don't get this jo strategic comms me jo uh, 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 pmo me baitha hai isliye maine uske liye bahut rangila term use kiya <laughs> so a major failure that this government sucks at communication and that's something even its ardent fans speak about and abhijit's given you like told you what's the reason behind it you got these babus who are doing a very bad job at it so that's an issue for over 8 years now so now coming again as we as is the you know flow of the show from the failure to the achievement 
So, Abhijit, uh, when it comes to vaccination, today we're looking at 193 crore vaccination doses. We looked at uh, the support which, you know, our home giant uh, got in Bharat Biotech and Covaxin ultimately turned out to be a game changer and much better than Chetan Bhagat's Pfizer and everything. And also the support which went to Serum and, you know, with Covishield and all that. And also digital certificates, which is unheard in a lot of Western developed countries that, you know, we have digital certificates. Along with that, if you look at the Ayushman Bharat scheme, right, which is um, a national uh, national public health insurance fund by GUI for people of, uh, you know, particular economic strata who don't have access and now already have 22 crore Indians who have a lifelong insurance scheme. How do you view these two things from vaccination and having schemes like this for the lesser uh, privileged Indians? Where, I mean, these are things which ultimately matter to the common man. Would you look at them as major achievements? So again, that vaccination, there are things out here like the insurance scheme, the vaccination, which are triumphs of public health. Right. They are truly triumphs of public health because everybody was saying you will never be able to get your population vaccinated. Right. You remember that? Yes, I do. I now do. we have proceeded on to triple vaccination. Right now, everybody can go get their third shot. Absolutely. Okay, and this has happened in less than one year. All if right. you remember all these concerns, they had risen last year during the uh, 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 March May second wave shuru hua tha na? Right. Uh, when everybody was dying. Right. Uh, one year later, where everybody is second vaccinated, we're looking at a third shot. Right. Okay. The failure was COVID shield. Uh, the uh, Bharat Biotech. Bharat Biotech. Is no, COVID Bharat Biotech is Covaxin. Covaxin. Because for the amount the government invested in them, they consistently underperformed in terms of production. They had a top-notch product, right. but in terms of production, they simply weren't able to scale up, but Serum Institute did scale up. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And we did it in spite of the blackmail that Pfizer was trying to do with us. Absolutely. Okay. Now, the question is, why were you so concerned about what other people said that you did not nationalize the decision to vaccine make and left it up to the states, the oxygen and things like that. Why did you delegate R back to the states in September 2020? Mm. And then reverse course and then take on the vaccination burden yourself. See, so many people could have been saved had those six wasted months not happened in between September to September, October, uh, September mm -hmm. 2020. Uh, October, November, December, January, February, March, March, April. Uh -huh. So seven, eight months. You could have saved so much time and so many lives right. by not allowing that decision to have been diluted. Right. See, this is what I keep saying. See, even in internal security, this is what I keep saying. Be unapologetic. If you centralize the decision, take ownership for it and take a firm decision. Don't vaccinate. Right. Don't dilute the decision making process. Now forget what has happened. You have achieved everything. Now, death figures, I do not believe they are more than about five to six lakhs maximum. Okay. Uh, even that will come down when you actually assess if it was the comorbidity or the actual disease that came. Right. Okay. Now, assume that this World Health Organization figure of four million is correct. 4 million people killed in India is still, in percentage terms, one of the lowest. Right. In 1.3 billion, I keep telling people, when you are talking about India, please do not talk in absolute numbers. Talk in percentages. True. Because in absolute numbers, right, I can tell you 4 million people killed hmm, is... Uh, the equivalent of what Denmark nuked? Yeah. Denmark ka population kya hai? Yeah, Finland ka population kya hai? The kriban char million hoga? Sir, somewhere around there. New, Zeal New Zealand's uh, four, 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 four to five million. New Zealand's four to five uh, million. You've lost a whole New Zealand in India. <laughs> and and Jacinda apparently was the darling who you know got it to zero COVID and then never got it again and. They kept on, you know, again, putting curfews and then Jacinda just in turn what they wanted Jacinda uh, to be. Uh, uh, so New Zealand population is 5 million, not 4 right. million. Right. Uh, 
Oh, Denmark is even more. It's almost six million. Okay, but as you four four million, don't know, yeah. Population, kiska four million hai? Chal chalis lakh kiska population hai? Uh, we lose two lakh people a year to TB. Between two to four lakh people per year to TB. Uh-huh. Nobody talks about it. Right. It doesn't even register. It's not even a national health crisis. True. Okay. Uh. in percentage terms it is negligible right in absolute terms it is huge because india is huge 1.3 billion means 4 million mar gaye it's not really that much true and again that number i think is vastly over over i Gosh. think the real number is again something like 50 uh, 5 to 6 lakhs and mm. usme se bhi it come down like you know britain because britain keeps a much higher level of accounting than we do our accounting is very rudimentary their record keeping is extraordinarily meticulous what they're finding is that most of the reported 60 to 70% of the reported deaths weren't actually covid deaths okay which you will also discover out here right so uh, now on the achievement front uh, which actually since it's not very dazzling and you know it, there's not much glamour attached to it but i think it's a big achievement which doesn't get its due it's the silent revolution the jal jeevan mission right where the government wants to give clean uh, pure tapped water to 19.9 crore indian households out of which in 2020 alone during the pandemic they gave it to 2 crore and mm-hmm. also 5000 crores was given you know to merge the tech with it i get israeli companies were also involved in drought areas like bundelkhand and you know Uh, places, other places like that in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, how big a game changer is this, Abhijit? And how much do you think this is a great it's, vision by the government? It's happened very silently, but you know, in Delhi today, uh, tap mm. water is drinkable. Did you know that? No, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, it's. Uh, I've actually been drinking tap water for the last two, three days after I heard right. this. Uh, Actually, chera chera khela khela hai. I ha. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. I uh, I learned about this in Athens where somebody. the uh, uh it was a conference and uh, uh somebody told me and i didn't believe them and i'm like chalo amoeba yes is hona hai to hona hi hai let me try it okay. i have not got in sick All so right. either my stomach is very very strong or we are in fact looking at uh we have reached a first world standard at least in delhi where the tap water is drinkable uh look it's small things like this like electro rural electrification toilets etc etc uh where the government's been very good because that does not require second order third order thing electricity dena hai isme second order third order kya hai bhai electricity dena hai bas lagao chalao yeah. uh-huh. they've gone and given electricity uh, uh uh rural toilets for everybody see there is a second third order effect there because personally i would never want to go into a rural toilet i will much rather shit out in the field than ever go into something like that uh, even today I, i i hate to admit this but even in delhi if i'm stuck somewhere i will not go to a public toilet i would rather piss on the side of the road than go inside a delhi public toilet right okay police pakde na pakde that's not my concern main road par hi pishab karunga main us delhi public toilet ke andar main nahi jane wala i'm very clear about this. when you going to break our uh, new record of we are open de- no defecation and open now in india to wo sab wo sab mere ko nahi pata hai main nahi karne wala un toilets ke andar theek hai mera toilet is a very very clean toilet and i expect a certain level of hygiene from it which right. unfortunately we do not have in india we do of not course, have toilet toilets but have the facilities been built for everyone yes emphatically yes and in a patriarchal society where women don't want to be or they get raped when they're defecating in public and things like that uh, or in the fields or whatever this provides a sense of security and it brings it closer to the house and things like that which i accept i'm not another fail, failure of the government failure nahi but a criticism hai is government ka jo mujhe lagta hai ki abhi jit ko address karna chahiye jab hum fdi ki baat karte hain foreign investment ki to we know ki now government is very very uh, strict there and hona bhi chahiye especially think tank mein jo foreign uh, 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 investment hai usko leke ho gaya hai तो ये चीज तो अच्छा है बट द सेम टाइम पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज को जो डोनेशन है फॉरेन से आता से आने वाला उसको आप अनोनिमस भी दे सकते हैं सो अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल रेज दिस क्वेश्चन कि इफ एनी बिजनेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वांट्स एनी पॉलिटिकल 
जो पावर में वहां पे इस वक्त है पार्टी उसको किसी तरह का स्पेसिफिक पॉलिसी फ्रेम करवाना चाहते हैं तो दे विल डोनेट एनोनिमस और ये बहुत ही मुश्किल होगा ये प्रूव करना कि यहाँ पे लेन देन हुआ भी है इवन तो वट इज योर वी देयर See what I, as I understand it, is mm-hmm. before you could actually donate in return for specific policy tweaks. The BJP doesn't take money for policy tweaks. The BJP goes and tells people, "Dekh, bhai, main sarkar mein hone wala hu. To mere achhe books mein rehna hai, to mere ko paisa de. Main tere liye kuch nahi karunga. Tu bas mere ko paisa dega, kyunki agle baar tu mere se milne aayega na, usi ke liye tere ko mere ko paisa dega." ठीक है ना सो इट इज नॉट इट्स बैड बिकॉज बिफोर यू कुड एटलीस्ट गेट सर्टन स्पेसिफिक थिंग्स आउट नाउ हाउ डू यू इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज सी दे हैव नॉट इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज द करप्शन फ्री सिस्टम दे हैव इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज द सिस्टम दैट इज नॉट करप्ट बिकॉज द मैन एट द टॉप इज नॉट करप्ट इफ द मैन एट द टॉप इज करप्ट दिस सिस्टम विल बी अब्यूज हॉरबली and this is the problem with this government they don't think institutionally for them everything is modi 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 ke baad inka dimag hi nahi chalta hai it's like the sun you know when the sun comes out in the morning you can't see any of the other stars to so inke liye jab modi dikhai deta hai na baaki kuch dikhai nahi deta hai inka policy modi hai inka nara modi hai sab kuch modi hai. it's become <laughs> it's become a it's become a mirror image of the congress and the gandhi so And yeah, and, and please tell them stop doing those cheesy things of every one month writing an essay on Twitter that how much we love Modi ji and आज उन्होंने bottle उठाई कल वो यहाँ गए थे विष्णु गुरु that's so creepy and I had some diehard fans tell me कि क्या you don't can't you go to praise your leader I was like dude employees है वो उसके so that कोई context तो मरे अरे अरे मेरे को पता नहीं क्या क्या लोग बोलते हैं तुम दोनों को क्या बोलते हो के अरे कठवे वापस पाकिस्तान जा या इराक जा <laughs> पता नहीं कौन है इधर शिया कौन है इधर सुन्नी पर जो भी है शिया लोग वापस ईरान जाओ सुन्नी लोग वापस पाकिस्तान जाओ और कठुए और क्या हुआ बाकी क्या आ, यही बोलते होंगे को इन इन इससे ज्यादा हाँ पंक्चर हाँ पंक्चर वाला पंक्चर वाला पंक्चर वाला पंक्चर वाली की तो इससे ज्यादा इनको और कुछ आता नहीं यही इनकी है इनका ना इनका नेशन राइट नाउ वो पर्सनली This is this is the ten dimensional chess wadis, you know. I know. So, all right. So, so now, I, I right, in, but I, the problem is, any just people get bigger and bigger. Right. Okay, now the government loves this kind of thing. Psycho fans, yeah. Okay, so, so this the is last. You, uh, the, the the difference between Modi and Rahul Gandhi is not the psychophancy; it's the competence. They are both lovers of the same levels of psychophancy. the difference is one is competent the other is phenomenally incompetent so i think the last one will be for me the last achievement and then amna will uh, give the last one as failure and then we could wrap it up last one abhijit yours and my favorite i mean i'm a fanboy i'm more or less sure you're a fanboy as well uh, nitin gadkari i mean easily the best performing minister of union yeah. road transport and highways creating records like eating breakfast every day 37 kilometers of highways you know made last year and he's been breaking his own records every year yeah. which is the, the longest being made in the world anywhere and the number of expressways that he's making i mean the delhi mumbai expressway which will be up in 2023 12 hours i mean that's unreal uh, on that front on the highway front the revolution you talk to taxi drivers you yourself see in india when we saw it as kids in 90s pathetic highways something about that man and the revolution which india is doing on the highway front look it's when you talk about nitin gadkari it's just impossible to criticize him and it's not because he's a very affable character he's not going to throw you into jail or anything if you criticize him it's just that he thinks things through so well he knows every bureaucratic trick he knows kaise kaam chori hota hai bureaucracy mein he knows corruption kaise hota hai isme he knows his job 
he knows how to delegate power he knows how now not to micromanage and just give meta and if you don't perform you are then removed he knows how to yell at people bahut pyar se i think you've seen him jhado yeah, five bureaucrats yeah, live yeah. <laughs> kitne pyar se jhado to very told the journalist ki kya ve tere ko kaun sa special privilege tere ko kyun do special privilege mere ko free pass de like nahi dunga main ja so uh that man is a serious overachiever remember he is the one the rss actually groomed to become prime minister of india he is probably the prime minister we should have and the prime minister we deserve alas it is what it is but that said let's not forget certain other performers in the cabinet as well we shouldn't forget uh, hardeep puri the entire parliament construction and thing is happening and remember how well it was thought out they tried leveling criticisms against it and he has parried all those criticisms it's clearly extremely well thought out extremely sustainable extremely uh, uh, this thing so fantastic uh, i think the other one that we should be uh, 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 at least marginally appreciative of, of if not completely appreciative of is jay shankar because even in his limited role as spokesperson he's very good right. all the other things he may not be good at but at least at the one job he is as speaking for india he is decent at that unfortunately the hubris backfired he was probably too smart by half but he at least he is saying something baki oh. is government mein koi bolta hi nahi right that's another one uh, who are the other ones we should be uh, uh, you know the health minister got removed uh-huh. uh, because technically health at least during covid was being micromanaged by the pmo so uh-huh. let's also appreciate like but then this program was about appreciating criticizing mostly the pmo right amna <laughs> um, we can start off uh, so, we can end it with failure uh, what would be the last failure charge yeah the last question is that ki jo planning commissions ki report thi wo is government ne discontinue kar diya and it is said ki agar koi uh, audit ke liye kuch matlab government can announce so much thing ki hum ye kar rahe hain ye kar rahe hain but usko audit ya to bahut late aayega ya hame malum nahi padega jab uski relevancy khatam ho jayegi tab uska report aake bhi kya fayda hai so yeah. what do you matlab think about it ki uh, so so the accountability factor is isn't there if anything some accountability has largely been eroded under this government एक और चीज आई वांटेड टू ऐड अभिजीत एनपीआर जैसी छोटी सी चीज सेंसस गवर्नमेंट क्यों नहीं करती एवरी कंट्री हैज अ सिटीजन रजिस्ट्री अमेरिका हैज एवरीवन एस वी शुड नो द इंडिविजुअल्स तो आई थिंक यू शुड बट सी इवन एवरीथिंग गेट्स पॉलिटिसाइज्ड लाइक दिस व्हेन यू क्लियरली सी अगर छिपाने का कुछ नहीं है तो प्रोटेस्ट काय का करना आई थिंक द एनपीआर कीप्स कमिंग बैक टू टू थिंग्स द फेलियर ऑफ कम्युनिकेशंस एंड द फेलियर ऑफ पुलिसिंग census jaisi basic cheez to honi chahiye na it's been such a time and, i mean to, to, to be fair that was because of covid now it has to happen all right so overall uh, we let's end this is this um, abhijit as you are like a very objective modi uh, uh, you know pretty candid man one thing you really like about him and one thing you would want him to really improve so one thing i really like about him is genuinely not corrupt all right okay uh the one thing i really want him to improve is to get rid of his ego and this fear of his own shadow because he is preventing a lot he's micromanaging too much because he doesn't want to be overshadowed politically and he's trusting a whole lot of third raters and f graders because they are politically irrelevant correct he All needs right. to have a better bullshit meter basically So on that note, uh, hope you guys liked the episode. Please do like, share, subscribe, and support us because now, I mean, we take a substantial amount of our time from our other jobs to work on this. And Abhi, if you could just tell our viewers to like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe, please. Or gali dena hai to mere ko do in dono ko mat do. All right. Thank you, Abhijit. And that was our in depth, in detail with Abhijit's lot of academic wit and humor with regards to. the eight years of the modi uh, modi government modi administration not the regime eight years and that's the positives and the negatives we hope we've been able to be objective regarding brutally objective where he deserves praise and where he deserves criticism and if we get abused by both sides of the spectrum that would mean that we've done the right thing right job thank you thank you everyone